Hi, my name is Baby Soul, and you are watching Alta Daily. Um, I've been doing music literally, or well, singing, I should say, since I was like 12. Um, like young, mad young, and was writing and everything, but I never did it in the sense that I wanted to publish music. I kind of did it because it was just what I wanted, I loved to do. Like, it was just natural, just something that I could like release you know my feelings and all of that with um and it wasn't until high school where I started you know to do features everyone in my hometown PG County kind of knew that I sang because I was singing in school and everything like that um so that's pretty much how my name got out around my area and then it kind of was just up to me in college to get comfortable in who I was and in music um and then finally just like decide to go for it so that's what I did Fiendin', yeah, that's my first official single. Um, so I was in my senior year of high school, um, and basically I used to send my manager like voice notes of like anything that I would write. And I don't, I really honestly don't even know what made me write that song. Like I can't even tell you anything in particular. Like I just wrote a lot. Like I said, I've been writing since I was like 12. So whatever comes to me just comes and I sent it to him. And he was just like, nah, we're not letting this one go. <laughs> like you have to record this one. Cause I was always sending him stuff, but like this was, he was just like, nah, this is the one, you know, trying to push me. And so that's when I did it. And we just kind of went with that and we recorded it. I went to New York cause I was still in Maryland at the time. Um, and that was pretty much how that went. Yeah. People who didn't know that I sang were just like, you know, shocked. Like, oh my gosh, you can do more than just model, I guess, you know. Um, so yeah, it was it was a great response. It was great feedback, and it kind of just gave me a little sense, a little piece of like affirmation. Like, all right, you you got this. You know what I'm saying? Um, so his name is Track Master Beats. So honestly, when I first started with everything, like I was still a YouTube Beats person. Mm -hmm. Like I wasn't really into finding physical producers, which, you know, like now growing into me, like I can't work with somebody that's not like physically like producing, you know what I'm saying? Because now I know what it, the difference. Mm -hmm. But you know, when I just started, I was like, what's the quickest, yeah. cheapest yeah. way for me to just start? You know what I'm saying? And like before I used to kind of be shy about it, but I don't have a problem saying that anymore because everyone starts somewhere. You know what I'm saying? And if that's what you got to do, that actually I definitely want to like work towards the project. But while the project is being made, have singles out, you know, just so that people can see what it is I'm doing, see my growth um, and just see how, like I said, I've sonically improved. Like just being out here, being around the Nigerian creatives, like I needed this. So I actually met Bizzle through Mega. Um, and he kind of was like, you know, at first, like, let me just kind of see where it is that you're trying to do, how serious you are, which makes sense. Cause like I look on his Twitter and there are people in his comments every day, like boss, every second boss, it's me you want, I'm the one, you know what I'm saying? And like, so it was just, it was a blessing that he even was considering, you know, me or working with me or was interested. And then, you know, the more that I got into my music and the more I would send him voice, you know, yeah. memos and drafts and all of that and everything, the more he was like, all right, you know, she has potential and he became kind of more hands-on. It was just connecting me to people, connecting me to you guys, and, you know, other people in the industry. And like, he's really, he really has helped, you know, me get to where I am right now. You know what I'm saying? And like, it's only really up from here. Thank you, Bizzle, for everything that you've done and just being the fly plug that you are. You know what I'm saying? Putting everyone on and just being you. Of signing with a label. Um, right now, that's not like a goal, but you know, if I were to ever be blessed with that opportunity and it's the right one, you know what I'm saying? I would definitely go with it, but that's not like my, my goal. Like I said, my main goal is to just discover me, my sound, and who I am so that I can perfect that or get to the level where I'm comfortable enough. I didn't really start start performing until I moved to New York. Um, I kind of felt like I wanted to get my name known out there and the best way for, for me at that time um, was to perform. You know what I'm saying? Like people come out to performances all the time out there. Like the the music like space out there is just like very collaborative and very supportive and everyone just wants to see who's up, you know what I'm saying, or who's on their way. And that was kind of like my venue to get my name out there. So that's what I did. I just started performing and performing and performing, you know what I'm saying? And slowly my name started like getting a little, you know, a little buzz. So I wouldn't say competition per se, but there was like a certain pressure um, because I feel like with Afrobeats, it's a very male dominated industry. Like everyone knows that. So it's kind of just like, I don't even want to look at it as competition, but just more, like you said, proving yourself is kind of what I felt I had the pressure to do to just make sure that people would take me seriously as an artist. Cause I did model before. So I didn't want it to be, oh, she's a model who just wants to 
who just happens to be doing music. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is something that I've been wanting to do. Modeling was just what I came across first. You know, I just got this done actually today. Yeah, yeah. Like, and I haven't gotten like braids or twist anything faux locks yeah faux locks i haven't gotten anything like this since i was like young like a little girl where my mom had control over what i did with my hair and then after that i was like no more because it's so time consuming and it hurts but i mean for the most part like you know i was like i'm out here i just seen so many beautiful women with it it was just like why not you know like you have to like you know, I think it's like I feel like it's something that everyone should do or should try to do if you have the means to, because it's like everyone should know who they're from. Like you might not even come back and see like the great, great, great grandmother or, you know, even the aunt that, you know, you have. But just being here and experiencing being around this, you know, this many people like I grew up around African-American people. I grew up around Africans, you know what I'm saying, Nigerians. So like. The differences are obvious, but the similarities are as well. You know what I'm saying? So like them even coming here, it wouldn't be, it will, it would be a, a culture shock, but it wouldn't be in a negative way. Like they'll leave, you know, go back home. I feel like with a sense of, you know, completion maybe, or just a little bit, you know, just a little bit better than when they came. You know, I just think it's something that anybody needs, whether you're African American, whether you're Nigerian, whether you're Ghanaian, you know, all of that. Like, yeah. It's multiple people. Uh, you have like Michael Jackson for sure, Beyonce, um, Chris Brown. I love them three most especially because of their musical capability, variety, their range, like the fact that they're able to perform the way that they do. To me, it's just like I love performances. I love art. Like I love when people can make a performance an experience, you know what I'm saying, rather than just like a regular show and that's what they do and even with their music their delivery is a variety of things um whiz kid as well like even with the directions that he goes musically you know what i'm saying like he kind of did the the vibey wave that i was always trying to do with the afro beats so he kind of was the one person that i could look up to musically as far as that but yeah definitely those three as far as like artistry even when he came up like nigerian artists weren't really that dominant in the American industry in the rap game like if they were rapping you know it was probably someone who was not Nigerian or it was rare that it was somebody who was Nigerian so to just see him make it and then do it you know as quick I don't want to say as quickly as he did but kind of you know as quickly as he did and then be consistent it was like it was a great feeling and like now everyone from the DMV is just like ready to get put on and you know there's so much talent out there so you know, it was only a matter of time. We needed that, like, one pioneer. So we're thankful. We're thankful. <laughs> we're thankful for Wale. Yeah. So in general, it would definitely be, like, Summer Walker or Janae Aiko or Beyonce, of course. You know what I'm saying? Like, their music is just, like, the voice and the delivery. Like, everything is just so natural with them as far as the music. And I love that. It's not forced, you know. It's not because that's kind of just, like, how I am, so I, I resonate with it. And so those are like people that I would love to work with. As far as Afrobeats, um, you said woman in particular, um, definitely Yemi Alade. Oh my gosh, like her talent to me is just like, her energy, her performing, like I said, like I look at music as a whole, not just the songs, like it's deeper than that for me. So like I look at, when I look up to an artist, it's in that sense. And to her, she's like, to me, she's like, a1. A1. All day. Yeah. SARS. Um, Jules. Even though he's not a you know, Nigerian producer, but 100%. 100 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now, I'm still heavy on the Summer Walker, even though it dropped a month ago. Like, I, I can listen to that album through straight. Like, not skip a song, which is rare. Rare. Not skip one song and listen to it over and over again. Um, her. I believe uh, a new artist that I just got put on, Dio, D-Y-O. It's Dio, Dio, Fire. She's an amazing artist. She's kind of like um, me, you know, with the Afro, so Afro swing. Like, I just like, you know, people who are trying to do the same thing, you know, just seeing how they're approaching it and everything. She's fire. Um, always Janae Aiko, uh, Berna. I'm like, what? That's not even a question. Like, what? <laughs> Is that a question? You know? <laughs> I was kids sound from the other side. I love that album because he was able to do what I'm trying to do, which is incorporate other sounds with Afrobeat. So to me, I was just like, he had like salsa music on there, then he had the R&B, then he had the everything. I think it was probably more of a shock.
because when that project was released, I think that was like, what, 2018, 17? Right, so that sound still was kind of fairly new. Like it wasn't, as, then that's why, you know what I'm saying? It was fairly new back then. So it was probably just like a, it was different, but that album had way more than that. You know what I'm saying? And those are the songs that didn't get that much love. I think, I think One Dance did like, I mean, yeah, I think they did okay. You know, Come Closer, I think it did okay. Um, but the other ones, like I said, they just weren't, they were, it was different. It was new, you know, so it probably took a while for people to kind of warm up to it. So that might be, you know, the main reason why. The Alternative Network.